Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou, and welcome back to my channel. I want to talk about antimatter. What is it and where is it all hiding? So let's start. Our universe is huge, but despite this, there is one thing that we know for certain. It's not empty. Once it was hot and dense and packed with matter, which would eventually grow into the stars and galaxies that we see today. Matter is everywhere. Theory tells us that in the universe, we should expect all particles in the universe to have a mirror image, that matter should come hand in hand with antimatter. And when I say matter, what I generally mean are subatomic particles like protons, electrons and neutrons. These carry positive, negative and no charge respectively. Antimatter are the opposites of matter. Antiparticles will have the same mass as their particle counterparts, but other properties such as the electric charge are flipped. The positively charged positron, for example, is the antiparticle to the negatively charged electron. Since theory tells us that matter and antimatter can only be created in equal parts, after the Big Bang, the universe should have contained photons and equal numbers of particles and antiparticles. But today, when we look out on the universe, all we see are photons and matter. Where is all the antimatter? Neither the standard model of particle physics nor general relativity provide an explanation for the missing antimatter. But antimatter does exist. Physicists have been able to create them in particle accelerators like the Large Hadron Collider in CERN. The matter-antimatter asymmetry is one of the biggest unsolved problems today. So you might be tempted to think that the antimatter are just hidden away in some corner of our universe. But wherever antimatter particles interact with matter particles, they annihilate each other and release huge amounts of energy. This should be visible to us if it's happening, but we just haven't seen it. Or maybe during the Big Bang, we also generated a mirror anti-universe made up entirely of antimatter and where time flows backwards. If such a universe exists, then we could also explain away dark matter as it would be expected to generate large numbers of heavy neutrinos known as sterile neutrinos, a prime candidate for dark matter, but the numbers haven't been seen. Alternatively, even a tiny imbalance in the matter-antimatter ratio could in principle annihilate all matter-antimatter pairs, leaving behind just a tiny excess of matter. And when you look at the number of photons in the universe, you see some evidence of that. The number of photons in the universe is 10,000 times larger than that of atoms. So what could have caused this initial asymmetry? Some sort of CP violation is the prime candidate to have caused this initial asymmetry, where the C stands for charge and P stands for parity. C symmetry is when we take positively charged particles and reverse the charge. We end up with a negatively charged particle. Similarly, for P symmetry, we take a left-handed particle and mirror it, we would end up with a right-handed particle. CP symmetry is a combination of the two. Neutrinos violate P symmetry because there are plenty of left-handed neutrinos in our universe, but no right-handed neutrinos have ever been observed. If we were to mirror one neutrino, the laws of physics would change, hence it violates P symmetry. And similarly, if you reverse the charge of the left-handed neutrinos, you would expect to get left-handed antineutrinos, but these two are not known to exist, and thus violate C symmetry. But neutrinos aren't believed to violate CP symmetry because right-handed antineutrinos are known to exist, and maybe this is the true symmetry. But CP violation has been observed. Physicists looking at the decay of k particles, which can decay into either an electron antineutrino or an electron neutrino. If the decays were CP symmetric, then you would expect the rate of decay to be the same for both paths. 
But in practice, they observed that the kaon was more likely to decay into an electron neutrino by a tiny fraction. This was undeniable proof that physics does distinguish between matter and antimatter, which may be the reason why our universe is matter dominated. Physicists are still looking for a type of matter that behaves differently to its antimatter counterpart. That would have allowed the time to create the observed excess of matter and lack of antimatter in our universe. So the jury is still not out on this one yet, but let me know in the comment section below where you think all the antimatter is hiding. Thank you so much for watching this week's video, and if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe. I am super excited to announce the launch of Spacemog merchandise which can be found on my website and the link below. Be sure to check it out if you want to support me and to help me continue making videos.